Our gospel reading for this morning comes from Mark uh, chapter 7, as you can see listed there, various verses from this chapter, and I invite you to listen to the word. Now when the Pharisees and and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of the disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, Envy, slander, pride, folly, all these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we return to Mark, we return to the lectionary today, picking up where we left off. So just before our passage today, Jesus fed the 5,000 in that deserted place with only five loaves of bread, two fish, and no hand-washing facility. He then took a stroll, literally across the sea, to Gethsemane, Gentile territory, unclean territory, where those people lived. And while he was there, he touched them. Those people who were not only common, but sick. All of this means that even before this particular encounter with the Pharisees, according to the tradition of the elders, Jesus himself is defiled, unclean unfit to be in their society. And all of that makes this little scene about the disciples washing their hands a little petty. And it is. It's that kind of nitpicking, negative judgment we can do when we want to find fault with someone, but we really can't. Or when someone is desperately trying to hang on to their perceived authority by finding that one little thing that somebody else does wrong and making a big deal out of it. The Pharisees and the scribes have come from Jerusalem. But they have not come just to check in to see how things are going. They're not there because they're curious about Jesus and want to see for themselves what's going on. They are there with a very specific mission, to discredit him. He's messing with their perceived authority, and they can't have that. So they observe him, the crowd, and his disciples until they find that one thing that they can use. Some of the disciples hadn't washed their hands before they ate. Now they've got them. 
Because what kind of religious leader would not make sure his disciples followed all the traditions of the elders? And so their accusations are an attack on Jesus' credibility, questioning his leadership, his faithfulness, his purity. It was a way to show to the people that he wasn't holy enough to be who people were starting to whisper that he was. He's no Elijah. He's no prophet from the God. He's not the Not if he doesn't adhere to all the rules. So now they've got him. But the muckraking begins. But in usual form for Jesus, he turns it right back around on them. Now he could have told them this. He could have said, you're the Pharisees. It's your job to make sure people are living right. Because that was their job. The whole raison d'etre for the Pharisees was to interpret the law for daily living. That's why they existed. The Pharisees held an important position in Jewish life because the Torah, the laws of Moses, the Big Ten and the other 300 plus were all given to help people live into their unique relationship with God, into an uncommon relationship with God. These laws were not meant to be punitive or oppressive. They were meant to help set the people free. But there are a lot of them, over 300. And sometimes these laws weren't clear. Or you'd have laws that would contradict each other and so the role of the Pharisees was to interpret the law into terms and practices that people could understand and that they could do. But over the years, something happened. And the tradition of the elders, as it gets called here, which is how they interpreted the laws, became more important than the law itself. For example, hand washing. In all 300 plus laws, there is nothing that states a person must wash their hands before eating. Not one. The basis for this tradition probably comes from the law stating that the priest must bathe, must be cleansed, before entering the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant resided. But over time, that law got twisted and warped until it became this tradition to prove whether a person was a good Jew or just common. The word that we translate as defile or as unclean in Greek means common. Common. The law was meant to help people live uncommon lives. Lives that reflected this special relationship with God. But somehow along the way, these outward signs became more important than the law that was written in their hearts. Clean hands became the sign of faithfulness rather than clean hearts. Jesus calls them out on it, reminding them that it is not what goes into the body that defiles. We jumped over that fun little saying in there that talks about what you eat does not go into the heart, it goes into the stomach, and then it goes into the sewers. What goes into the body is not what defiles, but what comes out of the heart. And that's a reminder that we all need from time to time. It is very easy to get so caught up in the proper symbolic ways of representing faith outwardly that we can overlook those deeper demands of faith 
to serve God by doing good, holding in check our own selfish desires and egos so that we can better direct our energies toward the welfare of others. It is easier to follow a set practice of rules than to transform our hearts. And while some of these practices were created from good intentions, they're not enough if our hearts are not in it. We've come to hold on to human traditions as if they were divine. We've come to display our signs of faith or display signs of faith that have nothing to do with our relationship to God. Wearing a cross, carrying a Bible everywhere, sticking a fish symbol on the car, combining religious symbols with patriotic symbols, nailing up posters of ten, the Ten Commandments or the phrase, in God we trust, those are precepts we've created. They did not come from God. When we focus solely on displaying our clean hands to the world, well, then we are also guilty of that kind of lip service. And it's not the fast God asks of us. It's not living out the great commandment, that great commandment that gets lost in all those other laws, the command to love God and to love our neighbor. Those things are harder to do. And those are the things that can get our hands dirty. The basic virtues of love, reconciliation, and the good news that God has come among us all get lost in all those other rules. And we're called to remember those virtues and work at them because they are the things that make our relationship with God special, that make our hearts uncommon. It's not what we wear or eat that make us good. It is not sanitizing our hands, wrapping them in thick gloves, and keeping them tucked away from contact with others that make us uncommon or faithful. It is opening those hands to others around us, using them to break down the barriers and to build up love and reconciliation. It's getting them dirty so we can be people of common hands who have uncommon hearts. Amen.